How you guys doing? This is a little out of my comfort zone. It's first time here. Very awesome, though. The stories I've heard so far are awesome. So I wanted to tell a story. The theme is on Wanderlust, as you guys all know. I wanted to tell a story about how um, in my last uh, semester of college, I had the option of studying abroad rather than studying at my home university at the same cost. So I figured, why not continue my little um, uh, my fantasy bubble life of college, you know, and go study abroad while I can, make the most of it. So I decided to st the very next day I decided to go study abroad in India. Um, by the way, my roommate studied abroad in Brazil. If you're a young single male, go to Brazil. <laughs> I'm just saying. India's not bad, go to Brazil. So anyway, so I, the very next day, I signed up for India, and um, my girlfriend at the time um, decided to go to India with me. And two short months after that, we break up, which is just one month prior to the trip. And so that's how I ended up on a trip through India with the person I least wanted to be on it with. It's fun times. And <laughs> so um, after a week, we landed in Delhi. And after a week in Delhi, it was summer of 2005. It was blisteringly hot. And so we decided to go up to Missouri, which is in the foothills of the Himalayas. Missouri is a beautiful, beautiful tourist town. I mean, it's green, um, abundant animals, friendly people. I mean, the roads were like tiny, and there were all these little mountain villages. It was really, it was really beautiful. Um, Bambi sightings abound. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, but um, one, of the, one of the reasons why we went to Missouri was because we wanted to study Hindi, and there was a one-month-long one month language intensive course, and that's where I met Florence, or Flo for short. And Florence, or Flo, was this really cute French girl who had been traveling to India every summer of her life with her father, and she had dreams of being the French ambassador to India. And so Flo and I had got along really well right from the start. She spoke very little English, uh, so she would speak Hindi in a French accent which was so fucking hot. <laughs> it just fell head over heels for her, right? So very quickly, we kind of had this intimate relationship going on, and it was awesome. Um, what made it tricky was she wasn't living in the lodge that my group was li living in. She was living in this apartment upstairs, um, and her landlord was this kind of conservative guy who didn't allow her to have any visitors, especially men. And so we had to figure out ways where you know, we would hang out, and um, well, and I and I shared a room with a roommate. So so we really the question then became, where are we gonna do it? You know, and and so we we decided to fool around the woods a couple times. But after an incident of poison ivy and after a snake sighting, we decided that's not a good idea. And we decided that I would just sneak into her apartment late at night. And um, so that's what I started doing. I would sneak out of my um, lodge. Sorry, back up a little bit. Um, the manager of my lodge would lock the front door at nighttime, supposedly for our protection. Um, so I had no way of getting out, basically, to meet my French lover. So I basically figured out a way to sneak through the backyard and jump a couple walls, and I would get to her place like 3 in the morning, and we'd have our fun, and then I'd have to leave before the shopkeeper below her came. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to wake up earlier than a mountain man shopkeeper. <laughs> Not the easiest task in the world. Um, so basically from three to, three to like five, I'd be at her place. And then I felt like I was working two jobs or something. And then I had to, <laughs> it was like graveyard shift. And so I had to like leave my place, but the front door of my lodge wasn't open yet. So I'd have to hang out in the mountains in the cold, waiting for the front door to open. When it would open, I'd sneak in. Um, and so that we did this for a couple of weeks and it got really tiring. And one day I was like, look, we need to just figure out another way to do this. And I said, how about we just broad daylight? You know, I just come to your pr place, broad daylight. You know, and she's like, okay, let's try it. So she goes up, and 15 minutes later, I, I hang out, make sure no one's around. I sneak up after her. And we're there, we're hanging out for a few hours. And, um, and then all of a sudden, we hear the, a knocking on the door, and it's her landlord, right? And uh, we both froze, like deer in the headlights. And then we quickly started, like, putting clothes on, like, backwards, inside out, whatever. And, and while we were doing this, she's talking to her landlord, and we, we learned that he's there to fix the plumbing, which she had been complaining about for a long time. And so I needed to find a hiding place. I had no idea where the plumbing situation was, so I had to figure out where to hide, where the best place would, to, would be to hide. And the kitchen would obviously be a bad place. The bathroom would obviously be a bad place. And to get to the bathroom, you have to go through the bedroom, so I couldn't hide in the bedroom. So the only place that, that was left was the living room. 
and there's a small breakfast table kind of like this in the living room but maybe a little larger and there's this pink tablecloth that covered it and um, so I ducked under it and and so I'm there I'm hiding you know and then he comes she opens the door and he's like in the bathroom working on something and then her, her, his son comes in this is a dude named Bobble um, and so he comes in and he um, obviously had a huge crush on, on Flo. And um, so if there was anyone who had a motive of ratting me out, it was this guy. So I, I was kind of worried that he's there. But then his, his father uh, tells his son, hey, I need this tool, you know. And, and so his son runs downstairs. And I could hear that his father's in the bathroom, like on the floor, you know. Because he's like, oh, I need this tool. You know? And so I knew that that was my moment to escape. And so I, I darted. Well, first of all, before I even dart out of the table, I was just sitting there and just thinking of how cliche that whole situation was. <laughs> like, how many movies and TV shows have I seen where there's, like, a guy who's been fooling around? You know, I felt like I was, I felt like I was on the set of Three's Company, <laughs> and I was, like, Jack Tripper in some cockamamie situation. Mr. Furley was around, and I got to like, you know? And, but except my landlord wasn't Mr. Furley. My landlord was a mountain man shopkeeper, and I was fooling around with a French girl in the foothills of Himalayas. <laughs> What the fuck was I doing with my life, you know? So, uh, so anyway, so as soon as um, Bobble leaves, I, I uh, find my situation and I jump, um, I dart out from under the thing, and I couldn't go down the steps because I knew he was there somewhere. So I went to the balcony instinctively, just the only other exit, and I started climbing down the balcony. And remember, we're in the mountains, you know what I mean? So there's like 30 foot, like there's a road here, there's a building, and then there's like a drop. So I'm in the balcony like 30 feet above the mountain road and um, freaked out of my mind and I started climbing down and I find this ledge where I kind of supported myself and, um, and, and then I actually come across a little monkey in the mountains, right? <laughs> come across a little monkey, I think it's cute and it kind of brought me solace and peace and I'm just like, this is in the mountains, almost like a weird Ricola commercial, you know? <laughs> and, and I'm just looking at the monkey, and then the monkey's mother comes out of nowhere. She's fucking pissed, right? Now, th there's only one thing worse than hanging on a ledge 30 feet above mountainous terrain, and that's having to take a shit hanging on a ledge 30 feet. Because as soon as I saw that monkey mom, I was like, holy shit. But she didn't, she didn't, she was just kind of scaring me, and I kind of made my way down, and I eventually made it back to my lodge. And and um, that's the end of my story. Give it up again for Rajan. May he grace our stage many, many, many more times in the future.